Hi, I'm Chris Ritchie, the Park Superintendent for both the Battle of Lexington and Confederate Memorial State Historic Sites, and welcome to our yearly informational meeting. I'll be talking about both the Battle of Lexington and Confederate Memorial here in this video. Our informational meetings are designed to let you know what we have been doing, program we might have, and things that we've accomplished in the past year. And more importantly, to get input from you to tell us how we're doing, what you like to see from your state parks, and how we can improve upon our operations. Currently, we're just outside the Anderson House at the Battle of Lexington State Historic Site. And we will be visiting Confederate Memorial in a little while in this video. The Battle of Lexington became part of Missouri State Park System in 1958 to showcase the battle took place here on September 18, 1920, and 1861 between the Union troops and the Missouri State Guard. We were one of the first battles of the Civil War, and the Anderson House was used as a field hospital during the war. And during the battle, it was a hot button issue who had control of it. The Union wanted to keep it an active hospital and as a natural blockade against the State Guard, and the State Guard saw it as a great opportunity to fire upon the Union entrenchments because of the height. Corporal George Henry Palmer, a bugler, even won the Medal of Honor, leading the charge and retaking the Anderson House back after the State Guard took control of it. Corporal Palmer eventually became a major in the Army and is buried in Arlington National Cemetery along with his son and grandson, both who were generals who fought in World War I and World War II. They're one of the very few generational families that are buried in Arlington National Cemetery. Also on the grounds are remains of entrenchments that were hand dug by the Union forces to defend the Union headquarters. They were dug completely encircling the headquarters and between 5 and 12 feet in height. Today, only the mounds remain of what these entrenchments could have looked like. But we are on the very few battlefields left in the U.S. with existing trenches today. This past year, we completed a two-year project in repairing and protecting the windows of the Anderson House. Every window was removed with the glass and the wood frames that they were repaired where needed. Each window received a new glaze to keep the glass in place, oil on the inside, and paint on the outside. There were a total of 56 windows. Now Jeff, our maintenance supervisor, is going through each room and repairing and fixing any cracks in the walls and the ceilings. He's completed two rooms a year, one in the fall and one in the spring. This also gives us a chance to do a deep cleaning in each room. Our goal is to preserve the house for many generations to visit. Our program is coming back to normal after two years of restrictions because of COVID. We did have our annual Battle of the Bands last July, and this year we'll be having a reenactors coming back on the weekend of September 17th to help us do living history on our battle anniversary. We're also excited to bring back our Christmas open house the first weekend in December. Our school field trips were also restarting this year, and we have seen a great increase compared to the last two years. Actually, we've had more this year compared to the last two combined. One more thing, we've also added the Battlefield Tour to our tour lineup. This will give you a chance to walk into actual field of battle, as the Civil War soldiers did, and get a better understanding of why this place is so important in Missouri history. We also have a museum for you to go through and a short 20-minute film to watch to learn about the site. Now, through the magic of media, let's head over to Confederate Memorial State Historic Site so I can tell you about some exciting things that are taking place over there. Hi and welcome back. This is the Confederate Memorial State Historic Site here in Higginsville, Missouri. It was established in 1952 and it was to interpret the, the Confederate veterans home and the veterans and their families who lived here. Over 1,600 veterans and their families lived in the site for over 60 years. I want to show you a few things around the site, some of the historical values of it, um, and some of the projects that we had going on. So. Stay with me. Confederate Memorial was a small city. It had a working farm, a dairy farm, hospital, residence for families, retirement home for the singles, a chapel, a cemetery, pond, steam plant, and so much more. Everything that a small town would need to keep its residents well taken care of. Many who lived here lived well past 100 years of age. The oldest veteran was 109 when he passed, and the last veteran to pass away was called Uncle Johnny Graves, and he died at 108. Today we're trying to tell the stories of individuals who lived here, from the veterans, to their families, to the workers, who kept the home operational. In 1922, part of the land was used to create a park so everyone had a place to reflect, relax, and recreate. In keeping with the use of the park, I'm happy to announce this year, with the partnership of Higginsville Parks and Rec, 
An 18-hole disc golf course has been installed in the park. This will be the first full disc course in Missouri State Parks. You can come and play the course and give us feedback on the course. We would love to hear from you. Our interpretive staff brought back the Summer Reading Book Club. Also start working on cleaning the headstones within the cemetery. Our maintenance crew have been just as busy working hard and keeping everything well manicured and have even started a large project removing some of the invasive species in the park. Burning bush is one of our biggest species that we do have that surrounds mostly the cemetery area. At last count, there was over 1,800 burning bush plants. Currently, we removed approximately 350 of them with lots more to go. I would also like to add that I can't do this job without all my staff. So I have to give a big thanks to Jeff and Carla at the Battle of Lexington State Historic Site, Brad, Corey, and Marissa at Confederate Memorial State Historic Site, and all the seasonal staff at both parks who work tirelessly and effortlessly to make our two sites some of the greatest ones out there. So thanks guys. Well you made it to the end. Thank you for watching and attending our virtual public meeting presentation. Feel free to share this link with your friends and family. We welcome your feedback as this will be posted until the end of the month. If you have any questions, reach out to the, uh, either the Battle of Lexington State Historic Site at 660-259-4654 or Confederate Memorial State Historic Site at 660-584-2853. You can also email us at the Battle of Lexington State Historic Site at dnr.mo.gov or Confederate Memorial State Historic Site at dnr.mo.gov. You can also use the comments section to provide feedback focused on the operations of both the Battle of Lexington and Confederate Memorial State Historic Sites. If any other questions or comments, you can email Mo State Parks at dnr.mo.gov. The Battle of Lexington State Historic Site and Confederate Memorial State Historic Site's contact information is also listed in the video description for your convenience. Thanks to the citizens of Missouri, our state parks and historic sites are supported by a half one tenth of one percent of the park sold and sales tax. This sales tax allows for free access to Missouri's 92 state parks and historic sites. Remember, you're always welcome to Missouri State Parks.